Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Wildner. On this program, I love to feature physician authors, and today I have a terrific guest. Not only have we co-written a couple articles together, but he has written eight books that I could find on Amazon, and uh, there may be more. What I really want to learn is how he's been able to balance his career as a clinical psychiatrist with becoming a very prolific uh, author, and not just a writer of, uh, he's, uh, his, I would say his writings are not superficial, let me put it that way, and uh, we're going to delve into them. But before I welcome my erudite guest, a brief commercial. If you are a physician looking for a new job or considering locum tenens for the first time, check out Comp Health. I've worked locums with Comp Health. I appreciate the personalized experience with a recruiter dedicated to my specialty who knows my needs and goals. Comp Health also offers full time, permanent jobs if you're looking for a longer term switch. For more information, check out comphealth.com. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Ronald Pies. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Andrew. It's uh, great uh, being here. And um, I've also appreciated uh, the work that we've done together, uh, writing articles. And uh, it's, it's great to finally sort of sort of meet you. <laughs> right. Well, space. this is this is better, you know, than nothing, right? They used to it be is. you held the phone up to your ear and, and now we can see each other, which is yeah. which is great. And this program, by the way, is on YouTube. So there will be a, a version of it that looks just like this. And then there'll be uh, it's also on all on your favorite podcast player, whether that's right. Apple or Google or Spotify or Stitcher or iHeart or anyone you can think of, uh, it's there. And it's uh, fun to uh, listen to. Well, the best part of writing articles with you, because I write a lot of articles myself, but the best part of writing articles with you yes. is that you did most of the work. So <laughs> I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed that. All right. So let's get right to it. Uh, I'm a physician, a clinical, you know, in clinical practice full time, and I try and write, you know, full time and uh, it doesn't work every day. And it's hard and work-life yeah. balance is like, you know, way, way, way up here somewhere. So uh, you've been doing it for a long time. You've written eight books. How, how do you balance that with your uh, clinical practice over the years? Well, I, I, I've been lucky in a lot of ways, uh, Andrew. First of all, um, well, I, I, I haven't been seeing patients for the past few years, um, but now, I've been in psychiatry for almost 40 years. So during most of that time, I was seeing patients, uh, ran an inpatient unit, um, came up through the ranks in academic psychiatry, uh, um, worked in nursing homes and outpatient facilities and the whole, the whole deal. So there, there was certainly most of my, uh, uh, for most of my career, I was trying to do that sort of uh, work-life balance. Um, the last few years since I retired, I've been very fortunate. My, my brilliant wife is a tremendous uh, financial uh, manager, Nancy, and um, you know we're, we're comfortable enough so that I can write and, um, and not have to worry about um, uh, bringing in a lot of, uh, a lot of money. Uh, but it is a difficult, it is a difficult thing to do. Um, I guess my, my role model, you may uh, know the uh, poet physician uh, William Carlos Williams, uh, who was uh, believe mostly a, a pediatric uh, pediatric specialist uh, who who used to write poems in between seeing patients, which uh, I find both sort of amazing and and uh, admirable um, and, and baffling, I, I guess, and baffling yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, it, just to have the concentration to be able to do that is tremendous. But in a way, I, I, I've taken that as kind of a model. If he can do that, I mean, if he can write poems, great poems, by the way, uh, you know, in between seeing patients, there's got to be a way for me to take a half an hour 
uh, straight or an hour and, and, and write something of, of, of value. All right. Now let I, you know, so writing in retirement, that that's too easy. I want to go back, you know, you're 40 years old, you have a full-time job, you're married, you know, you're dealing with a house, you're dealing with academia and right. you're also writing. So right. when did you do it? Was it, you know, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. or in between patients, how, how, weekends? What did your wife have to say about that? You're taking time <laughs> away from the relationship. I, my wife keeps me very humble. She's always uh, uh, referred to my writing as my scribbling. And um, that keeps me um, very anchored and very uh, um, puts, puts what I do in perspective. Uh, but to answer your question, um, you know, I... Uh, have been writing since I was a teenager. Um, I mean, the first writing I did probably, you know, when I was 16 was a sh some uh, short story uh, and started writing poetry after that. And writing for me, uh, it's, it's a little bit like, like breathing. I mean, it's just what I do. So um, when I think of myself, uh, you know, who am I? <laughs> I? I think that Oh, as important as, as medicine and psychiatry have been to me, I, I think I see myself fundamentally as a writer. Uh, there's a very famous quote uh, from Chekhov. Wives don't tend to like this, but you know, Anton Chekhov was a, a physician and, of course, a playwright. His great comment was, um, medicine is my lawful wife and literature is my mistress. Um, Again, a lot of wives don't like that comment, but um, uh, in, in a way that's- I have that quote true. on my wall, by the way. Oh, you do? Yes. That's great. Um, and, and, you know, uh, it's, it's never been an issue for me. I mean, I've, I've always felt like that's what I need to do. I need to find the time to write. And if I'm going to compromise time or take away time, I've I've tried to uh, cut back on my clinical work over the years. I, I managed to do that so that I was working maybe instead of five days or six days a week, I was working maybe three or four days a week and spending some of the other time uh, writing. Uh, but I, I think also, you know, people think that you have to sit down and spend five or six hours at a stretch writing. I don't, I don't think that's true. I mean, I, I think that people can learn to write uh, in 10 minute intervals. Um, and uh, a lot of the writing I've done over the years has been sort of stitching together little scraps that I've done in five or 10 minute intervals. All right, well, let me pursue this a little more. So you've, you, well, first of all, I think we're kindred spirits here because a lot of what you just said um, if you asked me those questions would be the same answer. I've been writing since I was a teenager. I've tried to steal time away from uh, clinical practice for more writing right. and, and not writing. I once asked, a, I started writing way back in high school and I, I, one of the jobs I had was working for the school paper, of course. Ah. And I, and I remember interviewing a novelist, a local novelist who was very successful. And, you know, I was at a, a nice local school. So he was willing to sort of give me an hour. And, uh, you know, he was kind of a, well, he was a writer, you know, and I asked him, I said, you know, why do you write? You know, mm -hmm. does, it, does, it, does it, you know, he said, he said, writing makes me miserable. And I said, well, why do you write? And he said, well, not writing makes me more miserable. <laughs> uh, I get it. Right. I get it. So I, I think also... if you're a writer, I didn't get it then. I get it now for yes. sure. I think if you're a writer it, or probably uh, as a psychiatrist, do you have any insight into that? I mean, why is it that you have this? Uh, is it a compulsion? Well, I mean, <laughs> what, what would you call it? What would you call well, it? You know, well, first of all, let, let me just say, I, I also wrote for my high school newspaper, and uh, that was a kind of a formative influence. So we have another thing in common. Um, there is a great quote from Robert Frost, which you may have heard when he was defining or explaining poetry, and he uh, described it as, and I think I'm quoting, a momentary stay against confusion a momentary stay against confusion. 
um, for me, writing does that. It it is a way for me to uh, center myself, um, to bring some order to. Uh, as we all know, as physicians, some incredibly chaotic, stressful, difficult, painful, traumatic days. I mean, we've all been through that. And writing, not just poetry, but, but prose as well, writing does give me that, that momentary stay against confusion. And the world, as we know, it can be a pretty confusing place. So I, I don't think I would call it a compulsion. Um, but um, another writer once said that life doesn't become completely real for her until she writes. Until she writes it down. Who said that. Until she writes but it I think down. there's something to that. I like that. Now, I, I want to broach another kind of sensitive topic. You took time away, you admitted, from your clinical practice to yeah. write. Yes. Now, do you think your writing enhanced your clinical practice or was it sort of on a parallel track? And how did your clinical practice, besides taking up a lot of time, influence your writing? Well, uh, it's a good question. I, I do think it, it was a reciprocal relationship. Uh, when you work as a psychiatrist, but also when you work as, as a physician in any specialty. I mean, you are privy to the most intimate, the most personal, uh, and sometimes the most difficult and interesting uh, issues that people can, can possibly uh, present to you. And, and, and clearly, uh, as a writer, that, that can become, in quotes, uh, material for, for your writing. Obviously, you have to respect confidentiality and, and that's a given. But I think the writing that I do and have done over the years also influenced my work with, with patients. Uh, I think that when you write, particularly when you write fiction and you're imagining characters going through various stresses, losses, um, it forces you to develop a kind of an empathy um, so that when you're seeing patients, in a way, uh, the writing that you've done where you imagined characters going through all kinds of difficulties, uh, I think that that prepares you and, and equips you to deal with what patients are presenting to you. At least I've, I've found that that's true. Well, there's certainly an, an intimacy yes. with, in the practice of medicine, particularly I would think in uh, psychiatry. Absolutely. Um, that uh, you don't have a normal life and uh and you try and avoid it usually in normal yes. life right and... he, yes yes psychiatry uh you know, one of my teachers uh bob daly uh when i was in residency uh who's a tremendous guy used to say in psychiatry you can do biology in the morning and theology in the afternoon and there's a lot of truth to that you're not literally doing theology but you are, you are drawing on all kinds of resources in your education, in your development as a person. You're, you're, of course, you're, you're drawing on the biology that you've learned, um, but you're, you're also um, drawing on spiritual resources that um, I think um, are, are needed to really work with patients in, in an intimate and, and uh, in a deep structural way. So um, I've been very lucky and very fortunate, I guess, in, in, in the specialty that I chose. Are you working on any nonfiction or fiction now? Uh, yes, uh, I've been working on a book uh, that looks at the ethical teachings of the Jewish mystics, um, which is a fascinating area. And I'm <clears throat> I'm not so much interested in their mystical experiences, although those are fascinating. Some of them, uh, you'd be interested in this. I mean, I mean, some of the mystical experiences sound a little bit like uh, complex partial seizures to me, but uh, I'm, I'm less interested in the mystical aspects than I am in their ethical uh, teachings. And so I'm trying to develop a book now. I just sent, or will be sending the manuscript to a, a rabbi, uh, and I am not one, uh, to 
read it over and comment on it. And I'm, I'm hoping to get that out soon. Uh, I do have uh, a, uh, a trilogy out, a fiction trilogy. Um, can I plug that or no? I Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put links to your uh, books, okay. at least some of them. You know, there's too many to fill up the sheet. Uh, at least some of them for, uh, they're all on Amazon, right? They're all on Amazon. Right. I, I often tell people, wait for the movie. But uh, the trilogy that's that I have out is called the Levtov trilogy. Um, and it's, it's, um, a novel and two novellas that that are put together in one one book. Um, so, you know, I I like writing both fiction and and nonfiction. Um, and of course, I do a lot of writing, as you know, uh, and as you have done on, for Psychiatric Times. And uh, that's kind of been my sort of writing home for the last uh, thirty five or so years. I. Oddly enough, I started out in 1985 when one of my colleague friends, John Schwartz, uh, founded uh, Psychiatric Times. Uh, my first publication there was a short story. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, a, a short story that I just wrote is going to be appearing soon in Psychiatric Times. So in a way, I've, I've kind of come full circle. Well, that's exciting. And by the way, Psychiatric Times is, uh, I think it's psychiatrictimes.com. Right, it's an informational uh, resource for uh, physicians and others interested in psychiatry, and they have all kinds of psychiatric news, and they have some uh, pretty, uh, pretty sophisticated articles by you. So, uh... <laughs> yes, and and they do they do a lot of neuropsychiatry as well. So, uh, and it's a very eclectic uh, publication, everything from psychotherapy to uh, you know fMRI scans. Uh, so, I I think you know, your, your listeners would enjoy looking at that site. All right. Now, be before we wrap up, I, I just want you to paint me a picture. Am I taking writing time away from you now? When, do, <laughs> when do you actually write? You've got the whole day, right? Nothing to do. You're retired. There's the golf course, <laughs> you know, have a cup of coffee, right? Read the right. news. Where, where, where does the, what's the, your zone where, when writing happens? Well, uh, um, First of all, I, I stay off the golf course. I, uh, the, that's something that uh, doesn't take any of my time. So I do have more time to write. Um, I think my best writing time is uh, late in the evening when things have quieted down. I'm not getting uh, a dozen uh, emails. Um, so late in the evening is good. I'm definitely not a morning person. Um, I envy people who start writing at, you know, six in the morning, but that's definitely not me. I'm, I'm, I'm much more a, a night owl. And that's when I, I try to do most of my writing, say after uh, eight, eight or 9 p.m. Right. The world is kind of going to bed and, yeah. uh, and your world is waking up your yes. uh, fictional or uh, non-fictional world. Well, Dr. Price, this has been great. This is exactly what I wanted to do. And I hope we have an opportunity to do it again soon, particularly when this new uh, book comes out. We'll talk again. Uh, well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Andrew. And uh, I'm sure we'll find another opportunity to collaborate on a, another, another article. <laughs> oh, well, I'd like that. Now, before we close, I'd like to give another thanks to our sponsor, Comp Health. At Comp Health, you can talk with a recruiter who knows your specialty and will actually get to know you and your goals. Consider starting your personalized job search at comphealth.com. Again, that's comphealth.com. Dr. Ronald Pies, I want to thank you very much for being a guest on The Art of Medicine with Dr. Andrew Wilner. My privilege. Thank you. <laughs> This program is hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Wilner, MD, FACP, FAAN. Guests receive no financial compensation for their appearance on the art of medicine. Andrew Wilner, MD, is Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center, Memphis, Tennessee. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this program belong solely to Dr. Wilner and his guests and not necessarily to their employers, organizations, or other group or individual. While this program intends to be informative, it is meant for entertainment purposes only. 
the art of medicine does not offer professional financial, legal, or medical advice. Dr. Wilner and his guests assume no responsibility or liability for any damages, financial or otherwise, that arise in connection with consuming this program's content. Thanks for watching. For more episodes of The Art of Medicine, please subscribe www.andrewwilner.com.